We're live. Hey, it's Friday, it's noon, and it's Coach Manny, and I'm excited to be with you today on our program. Do you lack a sales process that keeps salespeople productive and accountable? Mr. Business Owner, that's the third question that we have in our um, continuing series that we started three weeks ago on the three massive mistakes even smart business owner make that keep them frustrated about the sales process. So today, uh, just introduce myself, I'm Coach Manny. I help organizations to increase sales by helping them to build a sales process that works strategically, tactically, and accountability-wise. I've been doing this effectively for way too many years, and I love what I do. And if doubling your sales is something that we should help you with, is it something that you're desiring, then we should help you. I just spent time with my entrepreneur group um, online. We just did a session at 11.30 this morning, and we're talking about that 90 days to success. So we'll talk more about that later in the program. The question for you today, and you know we always like to put a question out, right? Do you have an effective sales process from beginning to end, from seeing it to closing it to collecting the cash? Heck, do you even have a sales process? That's the question for you. And uh, thanks for the comment out there, Elsie. I, I want to welcome you guys all out there who are with us today. Uh, yeah, I have the tie on today. We got, we got my favorite color, of course, purple. We got that on today, too. So uh, only because we're in the middle of going between meetings. And, you know, I just did a session, and I was trying to keep this tie going right. But, you know, uh, when you do Facebook Live, you're on a reverse camera. And so sometimes it's a little hard. So I want to thank you all that are out there um, with us today. And I encourage you to um, please uh, share this out there because we're continuing to try to build this audience Friday. You know that we do this. And then we uh, also you can find us on a podcast. You can find us on YouTube next week with this episode. But uh, you guys get to see it live. And uh, we're glad you're with us today. And we'll welcome more as they come aboard. Um, <clears throat> just so for those of you who, who are just getting on board, <clears throat> do you lack a sales process that keeps salespeople productive and accountable? That is today's question. And it's the third question from our article on three massive mistakes even smart business owners make that keep them frustrated about sales. And today, uh, you know, normally we run through about three processes because that's all people can remember. But today's going to be a little longer program because I want to run you through nine pieces. And I know you're not going to remember them all, but don't worry. They're in the blog that comes out on Monday. Um, there'll be plenty of backup there in the newsletter if you're on our newsletter list. But... I thought it was important that at least briefly we go through these things because these are the things that you need to be doing uh, in order to get a sales process for your organization rolling. And um, if you want the article early and the list and that stuff, just email me uh, or send me a private message. I'll send it out to you uh, before it comes out on Monday. So num let's go through these, uh, throw up any questions you have. I'm not sure I'm going to get to them during the live program, but I will get to them eventually. All right, number one, are you pursuing your target market? Are you taking time to define what is my target market? Don't be afraid to make it too tight. I was just working with a client this earlier today, and they really get it, and their target market has gone from being way out here to being so tight now, and they're watching business come in and grow and just go off 
the chart. And, and we're so excited for them. I, I love watching people be successful. The tighter your market, the more you become the expert. And people get to know who you are. And the easier you can use digital marketing and the easier you're, and the more likely, I guess, your inbound process is going to work. So number one, target market. Number two, what are the products and services you're going to lead with? You might have a whole store full of products and services that people can buy, but what are you going to lead with? What's the thing that is going to open the door? What's the thing that really makes it happen out there? Which of these products get people excited and wanting to buy? Which of them are just add-ons and that once you have a customer, you can sell them? So number two is define what you're going to lead with and what you're going to follow with. Now number three is how do you generate leads? And if you haven't listened to targeted lead generation lately, please listen to the podcast. There's some good stuff on there, and we have got some great new guests that we're just starting to do interviews with now that are going to be coming on the program. I've been doing a lot straight from here, but we're going to be uh, adding some great guests. So how do you generate leads? What methods are you using to get qualified leads? I, I encourage you in my process, uh, get the book, Targeted Lead Generation, uh, out on Amazon, I encourage you in that book and in my process that I work with my clients with, these are the five top ways we get leads. These are the five secondary. And let's leave everything else alone for right now. Put my time, energy, and dollars into these five and these secondary five. And, you know, that's even too much. I'm starting to think about using only three in each. But, wow, that's how I generate leads. And a sales process tells the people that you're working with, this is how I generate leads, and this is what you need to use. Uh, so number four, how do you qualify leads? And what do you do after you uh, qualify? What do I do next? How does my process work? What's a qualified lead for you? Take some time and go from this is a lead, but this is a qualified lead in detail. This is my, as we call it today, this is my avatar. This is who I'm going after. What is the process I need to go through to take them from just being a lead to being a qualified lead? And a qualified lead means that there's somebody who can buy. There's somebody who wants to buy. There's somebody that's going to buy. All I got to do really now is convince them to buy from me. I spend so much time trying to convince people to buy. You know, let's find the ones that you can convince to buy from you. Number five, how good is your presentation? Wow. And this, I'm going to put a plug in here for you to come to Toastmasters at Rowan. Uh, great group. I happen to be leading that group right now with a team of leader, leadership team that's the best, one of the best leadership teams I've ever had the opportunity to work with. But Toastmasters at Rowan, we meet the second and fourth Monday at the Rowan Tech Center, 6.30 to 8.30. What a group. I think we have close to 30 people in the group now, and I really encourage you to come out and join uh, the group, and especially if you're working on your presentation. How good are you? in front of people. How good your presentation? You know, it's so key to closing the deal. Are you getting the message across? Are you using the right kind of PowerPoints? Are you looking at your slides or are you looking at your audience? Are you talking benefits or are you talking features? Is it about you? No, it's about them. Does the presentation make people feel like it's about them? And Always, if you have a company with multiple people, pe multiple people, you know, I've been doing too many presentations today. I'm losing my mouth. I'm sorry. If you have multiple people, is the right person doing the presentation? You as a CEO may be great at what certain things, but you might have somebody on your team who's just a fiery person in speaking. 
you know, this is what I love to do. Just put me out here. I don't want to do anything, but, you know, if I could spend my life doing nothing but this, I would do it because it's my gift. But everybody doesn't have that gift. But if you have that gift, then you should be the person doing the presentations. Number six, how effective is your proposal? How fast can you put it together? I heard that comment this morning talking to a client, and he said, the client said, where do I sign? And they weren't ready because right? the deal came together that quick. Now, there's great tools out there. Now, I can actually sit down with you today, and if you're ready to sign, we can bring it up, and you can sign right here, and we got a deal, and we're done. And it's amazing. So look at those tools out there. But make sure your proposal's effective. Make sure it answers all the questions. One of the things I encourage people to do is understand the questions that potentially could be asked during a presentation and put them in your proposal. Answer every question you can think of. Now, are you going to get them all? Of course not. But try to define those questions and try to put them in a proposal so when the client looks at that proposal, they know what the answer is. And I also encourage people that if possible, now I realize it's not always possible, and do the presentation either live or like this. I mean, I'm doing more and more work today through Zoom uh, as the tool, where I'm actually sitting down with a session with a client and we're on Zoom, they're on Zoom, I'm on Zoom, and we're doing business. I coach people that way. I hold meetings that way. Look, if you're going to do a proposal, it's best if I walk you through it rather than just give you the piece of paper. I mean, I might be a great writer, but live, or if I can show you and walk you through it, I can, you know, put those little things in there to keep you on the buying cycle or keep you closing. And I know some of you new people out there are, are going to say, well, that's not really how it's done anymore. I'm telling you, Zig had it right when he said, keep closing. I don't care what the new process says. <laughs> um, sales material. And this is number seven. And we got a few more. To, I know we're going through a lot of information here today. But like I said, go out on the blog next week. We'll have it out there on Monday uh, or Sunday night, one or the other. Sales material. Do you have any that's not old? You'd be amazed at how many companies I walk into and start working with. And I look at this sales material, and it's years old. What are people looking at today that's older than six months? It's already ancient, isn't it? Do you have a good leave behind? Or is it a leave behind that's going to, you know, end up in the trash can? I always like to leave a leave behind. Let's see, do I have one in here? I I forgot about this. I don't even have one in my office. Uh, that's terrible. I don't have my – but I use a cup that I use at conferences. There's nothing like a good coffee cup, big, well-done coffee cup. And, man, you give them – you leave them behind, they're going to sit down on the desk. I, you don't know how many people out there are sitting on the desk. On their desk is a cup that says Coach Manny. Nothing better than somebody walking in and saying, who's Coach Manny? Think about that for your process. What's the leave behind you're using? An effective leave behind can keep you center focused in that customer for a long time. I love magnets, and I encourage if you're in certain industries, I've got them all over my refrigerator. If I need somebody in certain industries, I go to the refrigerator, and it's there. What a great leave behind. Use your imagination. Don't just do a brochure or a trifle, do something that nobody else is doing. I got one client, they do a stress ball. I think that's a great leave behind. I got another client, they do um, these things that you stand up your phone on, and I don't even have one. I had it here. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, you know how many people just like to stand up their phone when they're in the office and work with it that way? Wow, that's amazing. So, uh now, number eight, follow-up. How effective is your follow-up process? If it's not that good, I encourage you again to read my book out there, My follow Sales Follow-Up Sucks. And you can identify the book. Just go out on Amazon and look up Manny Nowak. You'll see it. On the cover are just a 
big stack of business cards, which I know I go to many companies and I see them sitting there on the salesperson's desk. How effective is your sales process? How are you making sure it gets done? What is it? And does your sales team know this is what I'm supposed to do in a follow-up process mode? Breathe for a minute. I know I'm throwing a lot of stuff out there because, you know, I know I, I'm only going to get so much of your time on here. So 20 minutes, I'm trying to jam all this in here today. So if I'm going too fast, put me on slow motion or something. Number nine, one of the most critical things you can do, CRM. Now, Excel is not a CRM. Outlook is not a CRM. Constant contact is not a CRM. These are tools made for certain purposes. A CRM is a tool that allows you to put everybody in, to track what's going on, to do email marketing, all those things that needs to be in your CRM. You need a real tool that your salespeople can help and that tool has to be able to be used on a mobile device, on a tablet, on a PC, whatever the device is, it has to fit across that whole platform. Let technology do what it does best. You know, just look at the article, look at, or look at the Facebook Live session two weeks ago today when we talked about technology. It's all there. We talked a little bit about CRM. All kidding aside, get a CRM. I don't care. You know, I'm telling you, most companies you're going to spend about $300 a month on a good CRM, about what it costs you for a half decent car, not even a high end car, right? And this is what runs your business because today's effective business runs on a CRM that drives your sales process. You need a process and then you need to drive it with a CRM. And if you're not doing that, you know how to find me. Let's talk. So, what do you think? It's a lot of data today, huh? I know. Let me leave you with a call to action. The Entrepreneur Toolbox. We just finished a four-piece series this morning on 90 Days to Success, which takes you from how to build a long-term plan to building a 90-day plan, to building a weekly plan, to building a daily plan, to getting so much done. And as we said, all successful people have a morning routine. All successful people probably do more by 9 or 10 in the morning than the rest of, rest of the people do all day long. And if you really follow a good process by 1, like 1.30 in the day, you're done. And you've done more work than anybody else. The Entrepreneur Toolbox is where we talk about this, is where we teach you how to do this, is where you get all the products we put together before we ever send them out to anybody else. And there's no additional cost. We charge you a simple monthly fee. As the recording time, it's either somewhere between 29 and 49 depending on when you're watching this. Whether you're watching it live, it's $29.00. If you're watching this a few months from now, we're actually moving the price up. You get to ask questions. You get to, me to review your stuff. You get email contacts. You get your stuff on the show. In other words, we talk about the people. We work with your stuff. If you want to share it, it's all there for you. Um, CoachManny.com uh, is the place you should be. CoachManny.com. Uh, go out there, check it out, and uh, look underneath of the Entrepreneur Toolbox. I, I love all the messages, guys. Uh, Steve, great to see you on the show today. Please go back and watch the rest of it. Wow, we have, we have a good crowd out there today, and I'm happy. Get out there, take a look at that Entrepreneur Toolbox, and become a member. It's amazing what you can do. Just amazing. So I encourage you, uh, CoachManny.com and the Entrepreneur Toolbox is a click on there. 
$29.99 a month. Get in today and start working with us. Wow. I hope you've had a good day today. I hope um, we've, we've helped you and, and think about that sales process and I encourage you to get a sales process going for your company. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. And if you need some help, private message me, email me, connect up, call me. I'm always available. We're here to help you take your sales process to the next level. Again, uh, it's great to be here. We'll be. I, I think we're not going to be here next Friday. We may be here early. We'll put out some notes because uh, next Friday is Good Friday, so we're probably not going to be on here at noon. But um, thanks for joining me today, all you out there. I can't go through all the names. We got we got a great crowd. Thanks for joining me, and get out there and start working on that sales process. This is Coach Manny saying, have a great weekend, and get out there and build that business. Thank you.